Hi everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. Uh, before we get started with today's video, I do want to apologize for the uh, lack of videos the past few days. I've been down and out with a really bad migraine. I actually missed a couple days of work. Well, I shouldn't say I missed it, but I wasn't there. So just a quick explanation as to where I've been. Just been kind of down and out with a migraine. They definitely knocked me out for a little bit, but uh, just trying to get back into the swing of things. So today's video is all about saving battery life on your Galaxy Z Flip 4 or your Z Fold 4. So a couple of these tips are specific to both of these devices, but the rest of them pertain to all Samsung Galaxy devices. So let me go give the Flip 4 back to my uh, fiance so she can continue using her phone and we'll get started with the video. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So most of the things that we're gonna talk about in this video are gonna stem from going into our settings, which means swiping down on your notification panel and hitting the settings wheel right here. So what I went ahead and did is just added a setting shortcut to my home screen. Just a lot easier to access it for the sake of this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first setting to adjust to get the most out of the battery life on your Z Flip 4 or Z Fold 4 or other Galaxy device. So open up settings. You're gonna scroll down until you get to battery and device care, which is going to be right here. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and click on the battery section. All right, cool. Scroll down a little bit till you get to more battery settings. All right. And then what we have here is performance profile. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this. And we have two different profiles set up, and this is new for these devices. We have standard and light. So let me go ahead and explain this to you guys a little bit, because I, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about what this is about. So this is a lot different than going into, say, power saving mode or any of the other modes on your device, in that this doesn't hinder like the refresh rate, your uh, cellular strength or Wi-Fi strength, it doesn't hinder the screen brightness or your audio, anything like that. All this does is it lowers the maximum clock speed that your cores can reach on your system on a chip or your CPU. So let me explain this real quick. So your CPU, as it's running through and processing, it has a duty cycle, okay? Each one of these clock cycles. So it's almost like a wheel on a locomotive spinning. And the faster that wheel spins, the more that it's working, the more heat starts to build up. Heat is our enemy. Heat is always our enemy when it comes to these system on a chip or any type of CPU, your desktop computer, a laptop, anything like that. The more you push it, the more it starts to heat up and the less efficient it starts to run. And that's bad. We, we don't want that to happen because as you're increasing the clock speed, it's consuming more and more battery because a chip is no longer running as efficient as it does when it runs cooler. So what this does is this minimizes the maximum clock speed that any of your cores reach which means your CPU is always running at a more optimum level. So you're probably thinking, well, I don't really want this because I want the most out of my phone. I want the maximum. No, I, I totally get where you're coming from. I get that. But here's the thing. It's only lowering it by a couple hundred megahertz, and that's the top end range of your SOC in which it's just consuming more power than what you're going to get benefit from. You know, it becomes more of just a, a benchmark statement or something they can put on paper. But the reality is, is when your phone is getting pegged to the max like that, if you have a ton of apps open, um, if you're pushing it hard, any of these types of things happen, especially when you're like switching between apps real quick, right? In your recent apps panel, that causes a quick spike in the CPU usage. Now you don't notice it much, but it instantly sucks up battery life big time because it's pushing those clocks to the maximum. So when your cores are reaching that maximum, they are no longer working in an efficient manner. So if we lower that heat a little bit, that helps with the overall cooling of your device. It helps with the longevity, the lifespan of your components, right? Because the whole device as a whole isn't getting as hot. And it also helps with your battery life significantly because that last 10% of performance that you're trying to squeeze out of your device is the hardest on your battery because it's having to overcome that heat. And you also have to worry about thermal throttling. All right, so by putting this into light mode, yeah, you are sacrificing a little bit of that top end performance, but I'm telling you guys, you're not even gonna really notice it. I'll be surprised if you notice it at all. The only thing you're gonna notice is that your battery is gonna last longer. And do please keep this in mind, when you switch it to the light performance profile, that has no impact on gaming. So when you enter a game, like a game from the Play Store, anything that opens up with a game launcher, it will take advantage of the full clock speed that you have. All right, so let's go over the next tip on extending the battery on your Galaxy Z Flip or Z Fold 4. So we're gonna open up settings again. We're gonna go down to display. And right at the top, we have light mode and dark mode. I highly encourage everyone to consider using dark mode. And the reason that is, is because on these OLED panels, remember this is Super AMOLED, so it's all based on OLED technology. Any pixels that are black, any black areas on your screen require no electricity. 
because there is no illumination. The pixels don't get turned on. So by having a dark theme, like we look at our settings and our notification panel here, everything's dark, right? The background, these pixels are not getting lit up at all, which helps conserve battery life significantly. So if you're new to Samsung devices and you don't know about this, do please keep this in mind. Dark mode is your friend. It will help increase your battery life, no doubt about it. It's not up for debate or anything, this is just a fact. Dark mode does improve battery life. All right, the next tip I wanna share works with all Samsung Galaxy devices. Let's go into settings. Let's scroll down until we get to advanced features. All right, there we go. And we're gonna scroll down here until we get to Bixby routines. By default, it's off. Go ahead and turn that toggle on. We're gonna go ahead and click on there. Sorry about the background noise. My boys are going at it today. It's a Sunday. So we're gonna go ahead and add a routine. So on our if condition, let's go ahead and hit this plus sign. All right, if battery level, you see we have below or equal to or above. So we wanna go ahead and leave it on below and we're gonna put another value in here. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit and I'll put 30% and we're gonna hit done. So what we're saying is if the battery gets to 30% or lower, then we'll go ahead and hit the plus sign. We're gonna click on battery, all right? And we are going to click on power saving and we're gonna have that turn on. We're gonna click done. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click next. You can give it a name. I'm just gonna leave the defaults and I'm gonna hit done. So now we have a Bixby routine in place that says if my device gets to 30% or lower, I want power saving mode to turn on, which is gonna reduce the overall screen brightness, the clock speed, all the things that you know are part of power saving to help conserve battery power. And then once I go back on the charger and the device goes above 30%, turn power saving mode back off. So this is a great way for you to conserve your battery as it gets towards the bottom. And you can also adjust that value to be whatever you want. If you want it to turn on at the 50% mark or the 10% mark, whatever you want, you have that option via Bixby Routines. All right, for the next tip, this involves adjusting a couple of our display settings. So let's go into settings. All right, on the left, we have display. All right, so the biggest culprit for battery consumption is always your screen brightness. It will make the biggest difference of anything other than searching for cell towers if you're in a bad service area. That's really demanding on your battery as well. So we can make some adjustments here in our display settings to get the most for our battery life. So one setting I recommend having off, and I, I might get some disagreement on this in the comments, but that is adaptive brightness. So what adaptive brightness does is it automatically adjusts your brightness on what your device thinks is applicable based on the amount of light that it's getting on its sensor here in the front. So this is fine and dandy when you're indoors and things don't change much, but as you're going in and out and your brightness changes around you, your ambient brightness, this brightness will change drastically. And as you go outside, it will really maximize the brightness level, drain your battery super fast. What I prefer to do is turn adaptive brightness off Keep the extra brightness setting turned off as well, unless you need it, because this is really helpful outdoors. But inside, keep both these off and keep your brightness down to a moderate level. You will conserve battery life this way, for sure. There's no doubt about it. All right, so the next tip I have for Samsung devices that use OLED panels or Super AMOLED, any of the OLED-based technologies, is to use a dark wallpaper and a dark theme. So you'll notice whenever you get a new Samsung device, whether it be an S22 Ultra, the Z Fold 4, any of these devices, Samsung gives you wallpapers that are all dark in nature. Like here's one of the default wallpapers for the Z Fold 4. So you'll see here we have a lot of black. There's a little bit of an image here, but there's even black pixels that are blended in there. The reason Samsung did this is because they know what they're doing. This is an OLED panel, so all those pixels like we talked about earlier are not getting lit up at all. No electricity is being used. Nothing's being drained from your battery for those particular pixels. So you'll notice if we go into wallpapers, let's take a look here. So now we're in wallpapers and we go to my wallpapers. You'll notice almost all of them provided by Samsung are all dark natured like this. And that is completely intentional. So if you're the type that doesn't like these wallpapers and you like a big, you know, bright red, bright orange fire going on, you know, that's all great and it's nice to impress your friends, but do expect a hit on your battery life because you're illuminating all these pixels. You know, so I prefer to just stick with one of the Samsung ones. I mean, sometimes I show off different wallpapers for the sake of these videos, but otherwise when I'm using the device just for myself, I stick to something like this because I'm going to get a lot more battery life and I stick with a darker theme. All right. So keep your theme dark, keep your wallpaper dark, and you will conserve battery. 
All right, the next setting I want to show you, it's kind of a common sense one, but I'm going to throw them all out there for you. Let's go into settings. We'll go over to display and let's scroll down until we get to screen timeout. So if we open this up, you see on these OLED type displays, our maximum is 10 minutes. That's to help prevent OLED burn in. And what I recommend is that you pick the lowest value that's going to work for you. There's so many times I'll go to set my device down and without realizing it, I've accidentally just touched the power button or somehow it, you know, it's trying to read the fingerprint scanner so it'll turn on and I'll just walk away doing my own thing. And that's where the screen timeout really comes in handy because it will limit the amount of time that it's just going to sit there on for no reason. All right. So for the next tip I want to share, let's go into settings. All right. We're going to scroll down until we get to the lock screen right there. Let's click on that. And we have an option here for always on display. Now, I know this is brand new for some other ecosystems out there, and this is new for a lot of them guys, but for us on the Samsung side of things, we've had always on display for a long time now. I mean, I had it back like on my S9 Plus. So for me, the novelty has worn off, the newness of this feature has worn off, and I keep it off. And the reason I do that is because there's absolutely no need for me personally, I'm talking from personal experience, there's no need for my phone to show the time and show notifications when I'm wearing a smartwatch, it does the same thing for me. So why waste my battery life on having a device just sitting there off in the distance that I'm not even gonna view that often and have that display turned on all the time. I recommend turning it off unless it's new to you. I, I understand, I liked it the first couple weeks. Oh wow, this is really cool. My screen's showing me all this stuff and it's off here in the distance. And then I quickly realized, wow, this is just sucking up the battery and now everyone can see what's happening on my phone. I have no privacy anymore. Um, I'm actually not liking this after all. So it really wore off on me after a couple of weeks. I haven't enabled it once on this device. I have zero intentions of ever enabling it. Not a big fan of it. All right, so the next tip I wanna share isn't necessarily about getting you the most battery life during a day. It's about extending the overall battery life over time, right? Keeping your battery in good shape at year two, year three, year four. And that is protecting your battery from reaching 100% charge all the time. So Samsung has a built-in feature. I think we're all aware of it, but let me share it with you real quick. We'll go ahead and go into settings. We'll go into battery and device care again, like we did earlier, as soon as I can find it. All right, we'll go ahead and click on battery again, more battery settings, and we have the option at the bottom to protect battery. You can turn this on or off. Now what this does is if you turn this on, it will limit your charge to 85% and then it will stop charging. Now that's great for prolonging your battery life. However, my only quandary with that is that 85% is a really low number. That's 15% of our battery not being utilized at all. And I really feel like we can take that up to 90, 95%, and we'll still be cutting off before that 100% mark, but we're gonna get a lot more usable battery while still maintaining that great long battery life over the next few years. So let me show you a little trick on how to do that. Go ahead and turn the protect battery feature off. So now what we're gonna do is go into advanced features, all right? We're gonna go back to Bixby Routines. And we wanna go ahead and add a new routine. So now on our if condition, we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus. If battery level is equal or above. All right, so now I'm gonna hit here and go back a couple times and we will put 95%. Hit done. And then we're gonna hit then. All right, then we're gonna click on battery and we're gonna turn protect battery on. Go ahead and click next. Give it a name. Hit done. We now have a new Bixby routine and what this does is while we're charging our device, once it hits 95%, the battery protection feature is going to turn on and charging will stop. It will not charge past 95%. And then when you take the charger off and it dips below the 95%, the battery protection feature is going to turn itself back off. So when you go to plug it back in the charger, it's gonna start charging back up until it gets to 95%. And if for re any reason you turn this off, you disable this routine and you charge it up to 100% and you turn it back on, when you go to plug your charger back in, it's not gonna do anything because it's above 95%. It's gonna recognize that and it's gonna have the battery protection feature on, right? To protect your battery. So this is a great way for you to get another 10% or maybe set it to like 97%. So you get an additional 12% above that 85% and your phone will never max out at 100%. All right, so the last two tips that we have both revolve around the refresh rate on our displays. So the best way to see that these are actually taking effect 
is for us to see the refresh rate somewhere on our screen. So let me show you where we can enable our refresh rate so we can see it. That way we can see these last two tips in action. All right, so we'll go into settings. You're gonna scroll down until you get to about phone or if you're on a Galaxy tablet, it'll say about tablet. Click on that. All right, we're gonna go down here until we get to software information. And then we're gonna click on build number. I think it's like seven or eight times. Just keep clicking on it over and over and over. All right, it's gonna ask you for your pin. Let me do that real quick. So now that we've got that done, it has enabled a new option called developer options here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And you're gonna scroll down here until we see show refresh rate. Let's go ahead and turn that toggle on. So now in the top left corner, you're gonna see the refresh rate of the screen. You see as I'm moving up and down, it maxes it out to 120, right? So now we can see our refresh rate. So let's go ahead and talk about these next two battery saving tips now that we have this refresh rate enabled. All right, so we're gonna open up settings. We're gonna scroll down till we get to advanced features. All right. And we're gonna go down to Bixby routines. And this is for Z Flip 4 and Z Fold 4 owners. This also works on previous flip and fold devices. We're gonna go ahead and add a routine. All right, so if, we're gonna scroll down a little bit until we see something called folding status. If folding status equals completely closed, done. All right, then, we're gonna click on display, okay? We are gonna pick cover screen motion smoothness. Go ahead and pick that. And we can switch it from adaptive to standard. So if you don't mind your front screen having a little bit lower refresh rate, right? Going down from the 120 to 60 Hertz, like on the Fold 2, you can do that to save more battery. So we can go ahead and switch this to standard. We can click done, all right? We'll hit next, hit done to save it. Now let's see that in action real quick. So right here on the front screen, if we move up and down the settings like this, you see it goes to 120. Let's go ahead and close this up. Let's go to the front screen. You see here it says 60 in the corner. And no matter what I do, this front screen is staying maxed out at 60, as you can see here in the corner. This will definitely help save battery life. And uh, I really don't notice it much on the front screen anyway. This smaller screen being this way, um, just for checking notifications and doing quick things. So this is a great way to save battery power. You can also enable this on the main screen too if you want, although I really like that 120 on the main screen, so I don't mess with that. All right, so this last tip I wanna share with you is all about consuming media and getting the most out of your battery while doing so. So when you're normally watching things like YouTube and Netflix and all these other media type streaming services, anywhere where you're enjoying content, the maximum frame rate that you're gonna usually see, especially here on YouTube, is 60 frames per second. So we actually get zero benefit out of having 120 hertz enabled other than the comment section being a little bit smoother. So you see here, I have one of my videos playing on my channel and this is recorded at 30 FPS. So you see here that the refresh rate has throttled back to be in 30 FPS. This is great, this is exactly what we want. We're conserving battery, we're not using a whole 120 hertz refresh because we don't need it. The video is playing back at 30 frames per second, so we're seeing 30 frames per second. However, watch this. The second I go to start looking at other videos or go into the comments section and start doing this, the refresh rate goes up to 120. Now, I'm usually going through comments pretty slow, so I don't really care about the refresh rate being Mm, you know, totally up there at 120 frames per second. We're gonna go to settings real quick. We can leave the video playing so we can see it in action. We'll go down to advanced features. Again, we are gonna create another Bixby routine. All right, so let me scroll down here while we keep that video going. We are gonna move the video out of the way. Let's add a new routine. So if, and we are gonna pick app open as soon as I can find it. All right, so here's app opened. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick a YouTube from the list of apps that I have on my device. All right, cool, there it is right there. All right, we'll go ahead and hit done. Then, and I'm gonna go back to display. All right, so I'm gonna put main screen motion smoothness, and I'm gonna switch that to standard. I'm gonna click done. So what happens is, is if I open up YouTube, I want it to restrict the refresh rate to 60 hertz, right? We're switching it to standard instead of adaptive refresh rate. And when it's done, which means when I close out of YouTube, I want that to reverse itself. I don't wanna leave 60 hertz for all my other applications. I want 120 hertz for the rest. But while I'm watching YouTube, I wanna limit it to 60 hertz. So let's see that in action. We're gonna go ahead and click next. We'll save it. Cool, we have this new routine in place. Let's check it out in action. So we'll go back to YouTube. The video is still playing. All right, you can see here, it says 60 right there. 
we go through our comments, and you'll see it's not changing at all. So it does have some pros and cons here. Now you see here, it's gonna stick it at 60 when if you're just watching a video at 120 hertz, it'll drop it down to 30 if the content creator created a 30 frames per second video like I did here. So if most of your content creators are shooting in 30 FPS, it still might benefit you to leave this off. However, if you watch a lot of different content or if you want to enable this for like Netflix and HBO Max, this can really save you a lot of battery life because now you are locked at 60 frames per second even when you go through comments. As we can see right here, it's staying at 60. And the cool thing is, is once we exit out of this application, right? I'll hit the X here. Let's exit out of YouTube entirely. Screen's back to 120. As I go through them, the screen's moving back between 120. So quite a few big speed routines in this video to help you get the most out of your battery life. And I hope one or two of these tips was helpful. As always, thanks for watching.